Glad to have you join us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Aneta Felix. And I am Musaogi Ogbon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it is a Tuesday morning, of course, uh, second working day in the week. Looking forward to what the rest of the week brings. We have a lot of conversations this morning uh, in different directions entirely. And we hope that we can, of course, uh, have you uh, join us all through the program this morning. Yes, and if you're a youth, you know that one of the biggest conversations on social media is about the Big Brother Ninja. And if you're not, let's fill you in. So the Big Brother Ninja lockdown reunion is holding. It began on, on June 17th. That was last week, right? And people have been talking about this, talking about the love triangles between some housemates, talking about this and that. But I think the bigger conversation really has been the question of, how important a conversation is this right now when we're talking about challenges such as insecurity, the elections coming up here and there. So how important is a conversation about, you know, the Big Brother Niger lockdown? We know that, you know, uh, they opened the doors for people to have early registration. So there's a, there's a new round coming up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. People see this as a distraction. But the question is really, is this entertainment that we all need or simply a distraction from the real issues? Uh, well, I mean, the country is not going to shut down entirely and every sector of the country is not going to shut down to, you know, because um, there's uh, certain factors, insecurity, the economy and some of all, the, all those other things that uh, might be big challenges in Nigeria today. You know, um, I think it's great that we all accept that those challenge, challenges exist and we continue uh, to do what is necessary to ensure that those things are fixed and government, you know, steps up, you know, to address those challenges. Um, but it doesn't stop other businesses from running and one of those businesses is the business of entertainment um, they will still go on you know if, if it is a um, it, it, not every single person is going to be involved with it um, it you know for those who describe it as a distraction you know you're not necessarily meant to focus on it you know you can still focus on the other things that you see as important um, and for those who are I mean th there has to be a balance you know and there should be a you know a, a, a good space for everything to you know work harmoniously for those who want to watch it, they can watch it. For those mm -hmm. who do not think that they want to watch it, they can watch other things. They can watch the news. They can be more involved in politics. Does it tell um, a story of uh, how you know how uh, where the youth interest is in Nigeria today? Maybe, maybe not. You know, but um, once again, there, there there should be you know a balance of everything. You know, so everyone who spends thirty minutes or one hour of their time wa watching you know the um, entertainment shows or on, on television on or catching media. you exactly can you know eventually when they're done with that still remember what is important. So I don't see it as a as a distraction. Yes, you know, it, and it, I, for for me, I also look at the angle that this is a show <laughs> that has made lives. Look at people like Miracle, who even though he's gone under the radar, we know how that's important in helping him further his dreams of becoming a pilot. Look at people like Erica, you know, who through the fame they garnered on the show have now gone ahead to launch their careers. She's been acting for a long time. She, she, you know, in one of her recent posts, she said she's been acting and doing TV commercials since it was, she was 18. But, I mean, she wasn't thrust in the limelight. This show did that for her. Look at people like Mercy. Look at people like Tatcha, who have gone on to become great brand influencers. So Big Brother Niger has made people... I mean, look at um, Bisola. Bisola is a fantastic singer. She's an actress. She got that launch pad on the Big Brother Niger show. Look at people like Venita Apofore, who... You know, was a star in the movie My Village People, who premiered, which premiered a few, a few um, days, weeks ago. So I think we still have to consider the good side. You know, bringing in that aspect of balance. That this is a show that has helped people launch their careers in a country where we complain about gross youth unemployment by the millions. This is a show that many people have looked towards to change their fortunes, and mm -hmm. it has happened. And beyond Big Brother Nigeria, there's all the entertainment platforms. There's The Voice, there's Nigerian Idol, there's you know Ultimate Love. So all these shows really have helped people get that. Because in this economy that we are right now, it seems social capital is everything. You need to get your rep boost, boosted up. So once you're popular, once you're, once you're important, people like MC Macarini, Mr. Mr. Shaggy, um, Instagram comedians, you, once you get all that influence, you're able to, you know, convince brands who need to constantly get their market out in the faces of their target audience that you have the crowd that can pull that market. So, yes, we should not underestimate the power of social media, of these entertainment platforms. 
as a means to help Nigerians get out of poverty, whether we like it or not. Yeah. And yeah. for us, the what people, the audience, you know, the bystanders, it helps us, you know, relieve some stress. You you, you laugh here and there. You you give an ah. You see couples all you know booed up. It's entertainment that we need really to relieve ourselves of the stress. You know, for people who say, let's focus on other platforms, let's do a reality show for, you know, gospel, let's do a reality show for people who are smart, there are things like that. You know, there's the who wants to be a millionaire, even though we're not hearing of that anymore. But this is also um, a wake-up call to let people know, investors know that you can, you can focus on something like this. You can do a reality show for smart people. You can do something, you can do competitions. I mean... Many Nigerians have fantastic business ideas. They're looking for sponsors. I know there's a couple. There's the Titans. There's um, there's a new one now, Lions Den, Nigerian version. So if you think it's a distraction and you have the funds, there's definitely the market for it. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, investors, producers, you know, these uh, media organizations will put their money where they think they will make the most. Um, uh, uh, profit, you know, uh, from and mm -hmm. if it is the entertainment that comes from the Big Brother Nigeria show, if it's the controversy that comes from it, because um, you know the controversial moments and you know from what we saw last night, also those are the things that sell and create the most conversations. You know, get um, uh, it was just a lot of you know necessary drama. Drama. <laughs> um, you know, those are the things that um, you know bring the most profit and the most traffic to them, and that's what they feed off. Mm -hmm. You know, so they will, you know, promote, they will push, they would create scenes, they would cause whatever it is, you know, to create that drama and to create, you know, all that controversy, um, because that's what sells the show. And, you know, there's also arguments that, you know, um, because of how much money and how much influence and how much popularity comes from these things, there's people who are becoming more desperate to get into those platforms and becoming more desperate to, um, you know, show off a personality that they feel will be most controversial and would bring the most traffic to mm -hmm. them. And so that might be where there might be a slight problem there. You know, yeah. so you're no longer going there to... You're not putting on a persona. Yeah, you're no longer going there to show off necessarily good characters, you know, but, you know, it seems like the most vile, the most annoying, aggressive. the most aggressive person... <laughs> is the one who gets the most traffic, you know, and there's a lot of people who want to go behind that and say, oh, yes, um, there's different excuses that they have for it. So, See, that, that, so that's, that's where I might have, you know, a little problem, you know, where there is more and more people who feel like they need to be vile and, and, um, and you know, negative um, in order to generate a followership, which yes. may not necessarily be true. true. That's why I mentioned, you know, the, the, the balance, the aspect of, you know, investors looking into other aspects. For example, in other countries like America, you have a national spelling bee competition. People in their millions tune in to watch those shows. And look at their contestants. They're kids of like two, two years old. That's an exaggeration. Kids, basically teenagers, participate in those spelling bee competition. Essays, things like that. Lots of people watch. They vote sometimes. You know, so I think that's, these are things we should we Entertainment should is entertainment. Well, yeah, entertainment, so, exactly. So entertainment don't. is entertainment. So we can have those reality shows and things like that in other sectors like education. It has worked in other climes. It can work for us here. Yep. So moving on now to our next top trending story. It's not a fantastic one. Um, tell us about it, about Shoma Ajawa. Well, she's uh, saying that uh, the um, uh, prize that she received, well, she was promised after mm -hmm. winning the um, Olympic gold, I believe, um, you know, 25 years later, she still has not been able, not received the house that she was promised. Uh, she also stated that, you know, when she approached the, um, you know, of, um, authorities, they uh, had denied her that the house because she is not a Lagosian, according to her, um, which, you know, is, is really, 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 really shocking. Um, she was uh, 25 years old um, when she became uh, Nigeria's first uh, 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 gold medal winner mm -hmm. at the Olympic Games. Um, and, you know, so, so I'm going to link this with what we're just, you know, speaking about. Yes. Um, the value that we put into some of all these things, which, yes. you know, is also maybe an issue. If you bring up a spelling bee competition, it may not generate the traffic that uh, Big Brother and Joshua would generate. If you bring up, you know, sports, and that's why a lot of sports, you know, not a lot of athletes would rather leave Nigeria and con uh, compete for other countries yes. because they know that they don't have, they don't receive that much value and patronage here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, what is the reward system for people who do very well with 
um, education or with sports or you know you know innovation things like that there's not a huge reward system because it's not entertaining for Nigerians and um, they would rather you know spend more time and you have millions and millions of people watch mm -hmm. things like the Big Brother Nigeria show because that for them is more entertaining um, so that's where you know there might be a little you know challenge with what we are and what direction we're going with our country but it doesn't in any way stop um, us for me being able to have you know a balance of both we just yes. need to do better with you know the attention and the um, the love that we have for innovation, for information technology, for uh, for sports, and some of all of that. Um, um, the Nigerian government also needs to do better. I still yeah. see every now and then where they say, "Oh, a person received one thousand five hundred naira for becoming a, a, a best graduation student in, in a university," Terrible. which you can argue that that's what the law has said since the seventies or the sixties when the university was open. But over time, those things should have been changed, should have been improved if there was value for some of all those things. So, um, Chuma Junwa, according to what she says, hasn't received her house um, and. And that's really, really sad. And just a bit of, of an info about Choma Ajinwa. Um, she was the 1996 Olympic gold medalist, the first <coughs> black woman to win a gold medal at the Games in Long Jump. I mean, she really did Nigeria proud. Um, during that time, she mentioned that um, uh, General Sania Bacha had given her a couple of things, you know, mentioned how she was conferred with a national honor. And uh, this was... After she won the first gold medal for Nigeria, she was given a national award, the member of the order of the Niger MON. And she was also a member of the police force. She was a police officer before she went into sports. So she said she was promoted from the rank of an inspector to an assistant superintendent one by the then General Sania Bacha um, government. You know, she also received one million naira, but she was promised a house. Mm -hmm. But she mentioned that the military administrator of Lagos then at the time you know, Ola Gunsoye, Uyinola, you know, gave three bedroom houses for gold medalists at the, at the Olympics. But for her, she was told because she's not in Lagosian, she wasn't going to receive that house, even though she had gotten the promise of receiving a house. So it's 25 years later, she's granted an interview to Pressman and saying this is a fact. But you need to understand that this is not just your margin where if you recall, we're talking about Pa Benedict Odiase, the composer of the Nigerian National Anthem. Uh, he passed on at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Luth, June 11th, 2013. He had been crying out for help that, you know, someone who composed Nigeria's National Anthem, he's saying he didn't get nothing. He was languishing in poverty, you know, suffering with his family. He was sick. There was no help. That's how he passed on. Even his family came to the news saying that they needed help to bury this man. So... And to me, that's, dis that's a disgrace, so that's disgraceful. And also, um, when we look at Michael Taiwo Akinkumi, the designer of Nigerian national flag, also so many complaints Same about story. how, look at all he's done for Nigeria as a country, but how he was suffering, living in a shack, you know, he had people who, you know, just private and corporate, just giving him money here and there. But the supposed honor or respect that he should be getting from the country, he didn't get that. So we've seen a history you know, of what it looks like neglect by the Nigerian government of people who do us a national honor. And I don't know if we can continue or sustain this. Well, um, what, what is, you know, what is valuable to the Nigerian state? Um, what exactly? And of course, yesterday we spoke about ASU. Uh, wanting to go back on strike because the government has failed on the promises, you know, so it's not, yes. you know, we've been hearing about failed promises for a long time uh, where they make promises and, you know, everybody claps and takes pictures and that's it. That's where it ends. You know, you don't get to receive any of all those things. Um, so the different angles, you know, would also still be with, you know, the value system, uh, the government promising and failing. And at the same time, also with regards to sports, you know, what happens after you win some of these awards, you know. You know and um, she came back, you know, others yeah. stayed in all those countries, you know, got a double citizenship. But she said she wanted to come back to Nigeria and continue to serve in the Nigerian police force because it was in the police force that she got that launching pad to play for Nigeria. So someone who wanted to, you know, pay back a country with loyalty, eh, didn't exactly get the same. Well, sad story. Uh, we need to do better, I guess. I think we can leave it there that we just need to do better as a country, um, you know, and, and fix some of the things that we, um, you know, see as values and the things that we see as important, you know, as a nation. Um, and if you don't reward good behavior, you would continue to see bad behavior uh, springing up here and there. You know, if you don't reward police officers, reward, you know, Nigerian army um, officers, reward everyone who plays a role in, in you know, and, and does something good in society, make good examples of them. 
Um, instead, you know, we seem to reward criminals. And, you know, and that's the sad part. And it's not just the Nigerian state, Nigerian people. You hear of governors who stole billions from their state, come back and they're, they're you know, uh, celebrated like they, they won, you know, uh, the Olympic gold someplace else. Um, so that's, that's really, it's a picture of what our reward system and what, you know, our value system really is like uh, for Nigeria. But we yes, need to go. That's All right. It. Stay with us. So we'll take a short break when we come back. We're moving into other conversations this morning here on The Breakfast. We'll be back.